it was a gun. I'm not voting. If we want to build our nation. The problem with the Somalians. Just want to experience something else than a black man. Move on, move on. like a horse with blinkers. Honestly, say, I was about to have sex and then I pulled Crap, but it's nice. I am John Mostert. I was born here in Khrafrenet. I am a Khoisan by birth. I am a, a retired policeman and also a, a small farmer. I'm Samantha Yankovic. I'm a DA councillor for the Kamdabur municipality. I'm Derek Light. I'm an attorney practicing in Khrafrenet and represent thousands of landowners in the Karoo. My name is Chantal Jaftan Moza. I'm the SPO officer at Kamdewo Municipality. I'm also the sub-regional secretary of the ANC in Kamdewo. I'm Paula Kingwell. I'm farming on, in the New Bethesda area um, and have been for the last few years. I'm Danke Jafta, born and bred in Kravrene, especially on the farm Langfontein in the district. Uh, I'm currently a school principal at the Narsenstraat Public Primary School. Uh, I am also the chief of the INQUA in the Tram de Boer. Fracking is a method, um, a drilling method, which was developed initially to extend the longevity of um, oil wells in the United States, um, but has since been refined and is used to target unconventional gas. It's, a, it's also called slick water drilling. Um, it effectively is a method where, whereby they drill into the into the show gas rock formations and then drill horizontally and then perforate the rock formations using uh, water uh, mixed with chemicals and sand or ceramics to crack the uh, under pressure to crack the rock formations to allow the gas to be released by the rocks. I see a, a better day because we are not certain what will be happening uh, beneath the ground. We had Ninam Shent, uh, when I was still a councillor and the mayor, coming here saying that our main water resources in the Tamdabu and in the Karoo, where this drilling is supposed to take place, uh, is underground water. So if uh, we drill down the ground and we don't know what's going on down the ground, we might uh, 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 Contem contaminate the, the groundwater, and uh, if the water is contaminated, where's the food security? What water will we drink? I w I'm fearing the day when you go to the tap, open the tap, and you must bath in oil. Uh, we're not supposed to bath in oil, we are supposed to bath in water. That's why I'm saying uh, I don't think we must go the fracking route, and especially if consultation hasn't taken place. Uh, correctly. I have to agree. I think that the problem is, is that we really just don't know enough. Um, the information that's coming back to us from the states and from other countries that have been where, where fracking is taking place is, is that the water is being polluted and that the places where the water is being polluted and, and the air is being polluted, the people are being asked to keep quiet. They're being paid off to keep quiet. And when, when money is being used in, in that sort of way, then one has, to be, one has to know that there's something very dangerous going on. And as a farmer, um, I, ca I cannot uh, risk having a single drop of poison in my water because one drop of poison will kill my cattle, that is my livelihood. It will also mean that the environment that I'm protecting um, no longer is, is a safe environment and that any meat that you eat that comes from the cows from my farm, you will also be contaminated. So it's not my livelihood alone, it's also all the people that eat the meat, it's the people that, that breathe the air. We don't know enough, we, we know a, there's a really high chance of, of contaminants into the water, but we also don't know how much is going into the air. How much are the, are the cattle breathing in? The, the, <clears throat> the toxins that are being stored, stored in their fat, there's, there's information about cattle dying on the side of the roads in, in some of the, the, the areas in the States, and that organic um, uh, suppliers are, if you start, are stopping uh, getting organic goods from organic farms that are near the fracking areas. So the, the, whether or not um, the, the, the fears are justified. The truth is, is that our industry will be, will be uh, damaged by that. Mm. And obviously all the people that, that are around, all the farm workers, all the, all the, 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 um, the people that, that enjoy the, the area are going to be severely um, hurt. We're no. crossing the boundaries of three provinces. Yeah. And there are further areas under, under application which covers large portions of Natal, a very large portion of the Orange Free State, and of the Northern Cape and Northwest provinces. Yeah. It will ultimately cover, if those 
well fields are, are, are developed will cover approximately 60% of the land surface of this country. It's, it's a big deal. <laughs> One of the um, reasons why I moved back from Johannesburg to Gravenit was because I told myself that my children will have a better future in Gravenit. What we enjoy most about the Karoo is the clear skies that we are having and also the fact that we know that the transportation that is going through the town is minimum. And if we are going to have something like Shell that's coming in Gravernet and we know that traffic is going to pick up, the other thing is also that Gravernet is sitting with a high unemployment rate. But what is not made clear to the people is that even if we are going to come here and we are going to look for guests, it's no guarantee that anyone is going to get a job because we don't have the specialities. The only thing that might happen is for them to be truck drivers, but nothing else. Yeah. Just to come on what uh, Chantel is saying there, uh, people are saying uh, they are spreading words and making people mad here mm. around us, saying mm. there will be 700,000 jobs. Mm. That is just a pipe dream. I think, to my opinion, that is just lies. Because it, it can't happen. If you look into the other mines in the country, big mines that do big business, they don't have that lot of people. Mm. So why do they spread that lies to the people and use it as a carrot? to get the people's uh, support for, for this. I think that is totally unacceptable and unfair to our community yeah. to mislead them in this specific fashion. That's why I'm saying uh, we want the government to intervene. I'm just worried about, the, uh, as a fall, small farmer, I'm just worried about uh, water pollution mm -hmm. for, for, the, for, the, for the sheep and, sheep and, 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 and the cattle. And uh, as a Khoisan, I'm worried about about our heritage sites. Our fathers, forefathers were, were 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 buried here. And on this farm here in Frieda, our king, Icon, his grave is there. And that's one thing also one thing that I'm afraid of that's going, going to be disturbed. Just to say that the, the, the thing that concerns me the most is the short term, as you were saying, it's, it's an incredibly short term view. There's a sense that there's a lot of money to be made and that people that are, are, are set to gain from it are thinking in a very greed framework and they're thinking right now, I'm going to make a lot of money and we're going to make a lot of money out of this area and there is no sense of future. You know, even Johannesburg is still paying for the, for the, you know, the acid mine, you know, the water is, is polluted in Johannesburg. The, the, the long term effects, you know, it could be eight years, it could be 15 years you know, at, at a push, but whatever it is, in, in after that time, there will be nothing here. It will be destroyed. This resource, if it exists in the quantities that they think it might, and if it is fully utilised, that resource will be exhausted within 20 to 30 years on the government's own report. Mm -hmm. We believe it will be shorter. We believe it will be 15 to 20 years. The point is this. It cannot replace any other source of energy. Right. We've got coal reserves for 300 years. Uh, it cannot replace coal as an energy resource. If you, if you come from Langfontein to Friedene, it's on the right hand side, it's near that where, where they store the water. Yes. Huh? Recently, and when we were growing up and visit there, then you see around that drilling place, it's just a black thing and no plants is growing there. Right. Now I'm having that in mind with all those well fields that you are talking about. You will just see a black That's thing and, and there will be no plants growing. There will be one like that every five to ten kilometers in every wind direction. Because they've got to access, to, to, to get the gas hot, you've got to access the rock. You've got to, and they, if they're drilling two and a half kilometers horizontally, where that hole stops, the fracking stops, and once they've exhausted that gas, they haven't accessed the gas beyond that point. So in another two and a half kilometers further, they've got to have another hole for them to benefit from the, uh, from, from the gas that's in the shell rock formation. So you, you won't recognize this country. My concern is mostly a social concern that I'm having right. um, because I work with these people every day. And I know the problem that we are faced with now today, especially in Kamdabur and also other areas, is teenage pregnancies. It's drug abuse and alcohol abuse. And my concern is when all of those people are coming in, 
even if they are married, we know that some people, they don't stick to their moral obligations. They will come and put up families here for the next five or whatever years and then move out again. We are already having a high rate of HIV within the Kamdabur. And my concern is that when people are going to come in, the women that are unemployed with income in the youth, that cannot see to their own needs, they are going to see it as a way of getting money, earning money by using their bodies and selling their bodies to whoever that is coming within this area. They recognise the risk and you know what their mitigation mem uh, uh, proposal was, to mitigate that risk, that it was essential to have condom dispensers on site. <laughs> Yeah. Now, now it, 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 it's almost an insult, yes. because it downplays, in America what's happened is in these little villages that have suddenly become big towns overnight, the one industry that boomed was the sex industry, mm. you know, strip clubs and to entertain these people. Yeah. So you're going to have the social evils and you 100% in raising them. The, um, the environment isn't just trees and air and water, it's people and we're part of this environment. And one of the issues you have with migratory labour is that um, your experts who are coming from overseas, your people who are coming from, from out of town, all the money that's earned here then leaves. The money doesn't stay here, it doesn't build anything, it doesn't grow anything, it all gets sent home. Um, and they've seen it in, in America and they've seen it in places like Poland where, where you've got this migratory labour. So we're not even going to directly, we'll, we'll benefit to a certain extent, but not to the extent that we'll be promised that we're going to benefit. We, we're not yet categorically against fracking. We're against fracking now. as it stands and the mm. knowledge stands now. Mm. What we're against is, 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 is irresponsible decision making. Yeah. Um, we've appealed to government to do what we call a strategic environmental assessment. That's where they can look at all of the issues that you've raised, the socio-economic issues. Do we need this source of energy? What are the reserves? What are the negative impacts? What's the impact on uh, infrastructure, roads? We don't have pipelines. What? Mm -hmm. To look at the full picture. If it takes you 10 years to do that research, to fill in the gaps, because the gaps of knowledge need to be filled in, scientific knowledge, all sorts of issues. Mm -hmm. Do your homework, and when you've got the answers, then you can take an informed decision. Mm -hmm. And it's either going to be yay or nay. Yeah. And, and you then do the right thing. Mm -hmm. It's about doing the right yeah. thing. My dream is uh, that uh, uh, the, the people might be well informed before decisions are taken. My dream is for Kamdeboer to remain as it is. And I'm not saying economically remain as it is. What I'm saying is that we need to look at the social illnesses within Kamdeboer and see how we can assist and how we can change it. My dream is that we will have a drug-free society within Kamdeboer. We will have minimum people that is dependent on grants. We will have minimum children that will, are going to give birth to children and that everyone will see the need for education within Kamdeboer and in South Africa. My dream as a resident in the Karoo, someone that's grown up here and, and got my schooling here and have earned a living here, is that we as people of the Karoo do right by our communities, that we, through our example, impact on important decisions that are taken at national level, and that we do right by our people, and that we uh, strive to overcome the shortcomings in our society, but that we do this in an economically and ecologically sustainable fashion so that we create wealth, but that we preserve what is important to the people of the Karoo and that we preserve our, our environment for future generations. My dream is that we never have to make the choice between our environment and money. My dream is that we find other ways of, of creating sustainable energy so that fracking is never an option for us. My dream is that education takes priority over everything else so that we can learn more about our environment, learn more about energy and we can find alternatives to fossil fuels. My dream is just that everyone should get honest job creations and Mother Earth shouldn't be disturbed.
My dream is that um, we will all work together to respect the earth, to, to love our water, land and sky and one another and, and that we, we need the Karoo. The, I need the Karoo and I think everybody that's watching this program needs the Karoo. So don't, don't, don't leave us, don't abandon us, fight for us. Thank you. You should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create this straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger Listen what is right and say what is wrong You should ever sit and talk with people Or else take a walk and create this straight talk Talk what is nice, it will make you feel stronger Listen what is right and say what is wrong